What's up, what's going on, Legends? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm bringing you guys the mission guide for Tier 2 of the White Lotus Faction. Here in Season 4, we will be covering all seven of the missions in this tier. And once you guys obviously complete the last one, that will unlock Tier 3 of the White Lotus Faction. Now, before we dive into it, if you guys do enjoy this content at any time or find this video helpful in any way, make sure to show your support for the channel by going down below and smashing that like button. Let's go and throw an easy goal of 200 likes on today's video, as well as if you'd like to find your way back to the channel for more Call of Duty content, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Also, that notification bell so we don't miss you in future videos. All right, so first up, we have Operation Black Gold. This one is going to be a three parter and it is sending us over to El Mazra. Part one is asking us to kill three enemies in half at port. So depending on obviously where you spawn into the map in your match, you guys are going to go ahead and open up your TAC map and determine where you are located. Then you're going to need to obviously ping half at port. And if you guys aren't already there, you're going to head over to it. And once you guys see half at port pop up at the top of your screen, you guys will be ready to eliminate three AI. So you're just going to navigate till you can find three enemies, which should be pretty easy to do. You guys then will eliminate the three enemies here and part one will be complete. Now part two is just asking us to kill three enemies in Rohan oil in the same deployment so over from half and port you guys are going to find your way over to a vehicle and you're going to want to drive it over to rohan oil and once you guys obviously get into the vicinity rohan oil will pop up at the top of your screen and at this point you guys will be good to get the three eliminations that you need you guys will then find yourself some ai obviously eliminate three of them and once you do so the second part it will be complete now part three is asking us to kill three enemies in the city cave complex in the same deployment now being that you're already at rohan eliminating the three for part two you guys will then be very close to the city cave complex where you guys will then obviously open up your tack map, ping it, head over to this location. Then once the Teak Cave Complex pops up at the top of your screen, you guys will be in the correct area and be good to go to eliminate the three enemies. You guys will then navigate your way to the three AI that you need. Then part three and this mission will be complete. Next up, we have Unknown Shipping. This one is going to be a two-parter and it's going to take us to El Mazra as well as Ashika Island. Part one is asking us to extract the three contraband packages from the sunken ships in El Mazra. Now these three sunken ships are actually going to be located off the coast of Sawa Village and kind of near the Seraph Bay area. So what you guys are going to want to do is once you infill into the map you're going to want to navigate to that portion of the map once you guys make your way over to this side of the map you guys are going to want to make your way to pretty much the edge where the water location is where you're pretty much going to be looking at one of the ships that is kind of submerged in the water this is going to be the one that's kind of partially sticking out and to the left of this is actually where you're going to want to look for your first sunken ship now this first one's going to be all the way down in the water but between the one that is halfway sunk and the one that is pretty much almost all the way sunk it's going to be a completely sunken ship if you guys go about 60 meters from the shore and i will do my best to show you guys this location on the map and you guys go ahead and swim down because then should be able to navigate where the first package is and then you're going to want to swim down here and you guys will be able to grab that first contraband package this will grab this one and be able to go over to the second one now that second location is going to be just to the left if you're looking at the shore from this first one and it's going to be in that halfway submerged ship you guys are going to make your way towards the front of this ship to the door that is basically closest to the shore you guys will head in take the right you guys find your way towards the middle of it where you guys will see some lockers knocked over beds just basically things have gone awry here in between one of the bed frames or or obviously a knocked over desk there and the wall will be a second contraband package this is where you guys will obviously be able to grab this one and you'll be prepared to head over to your third location now the third one is a little bit more straightforward as it is actually located in that giant ship that is attached to the shore of Sawa village so you guys are going to want to make your way over to this big ship and you're going to want to be careful because there is definitely a lot of ai in this location so you guys are going to want to eliminate the ai that you need to and you're going to head into one of the giant holes in the side of the ship obviously which one you go in doesn't really matter if you guys go in on the side that is closest to the other two ships you will take the left and climb up if you guys come through the other side of the ship you would take the right is it going to climb up here and on top of the box will be this third and last contraband package from the sunken ships so you guys will go ahead and grab this and the only thing left to do at this point would be to exfil safely but at that point you guys will go and get a rescue hostage if it's available so you guys can sneak off the map you guys will buy a personal exfil if that's what you want to do or you'll head over to your nearest exfil exfil safely and part one will be complete now part two is just asking us to extract the two contraband packages from the sunken ships in ashika island now this one's actually going to be a little bit easier except for the exfil part as the two sunken ships aren't really sunken and they're going to be located in the shipwreck location. So once you guys actually spawn into Ashika Island, you guys will see if you guys are already in the shipwreck area. If not, you're going to head over to that location. And once you get to the area, it doesn't actually matter which ship you go to first. However, I chose to go to the south one. And over in the south one, there is an area in the center of the boat that is kind of flooded. You're going to need to make your way over to this location and you guys should see the first contraband package pretty much in the water next to that HMS shipwreck cache. So you guys will then obviously be able to grab this first package that is in the center in the water and then move over to the second or northern boat once you guys get over to the northern boat this one's actually going to be more toward the front of the ship itself you guys will make your way over to the front and you guys will see and i will do my best to show these locations on the map you guys will be able to see that second contraband package you guys will then grab this one and the only thing left at this point will be to exfil safely you guys will probably head over to your nearest exfil as the rescue 
hostages aren't all that valuable here. You guys will then go ahead and exfil safely with these two contraband packages and the second part and mission will be complete. Next up, we have Key Elimination. This one is going to be a three-parter and you guys could do Almazra, Ashika, or Vondal. Part one is asking us to complete and eliminate HVT contracts. So what you're going to do is once you infill, open up your TAC map, you're going to be looking for the contract phone with the crosshair on it. You guys are going to then go ahead and ping that. Head over to it. You're going to grab it. What it's going to do at that point is obviously mark a specific or high value target on your map. You're going to head over to that area. Then once you guys identify him, which should be pretty easy, he's usually wearing something different than the rest of the AI in the area. This will then eliminate him and that will obviously complete this contract. Once you guys are able to complete the contract, part one is then complete. Now part two is asking us to take a key found on an HVT or elsewhere. So what you're going to need to do at this point is get access to any key. Now I think a stronghold key will count for part two, but it won't count for the third part. So it isn't going to be overall that useful to you. So you guys are then going to want to pick up whatever key the HVT dropped. And then more than likely, you're going to want to look up where that location of that key is for. Then once you guys have access to this key, the second part will be complete. Now, the third part is just asking us to take a key to unlock a locked space or locked cache. Now, this is why it's important that you guys pick up whatever the other key is and kind of look up where that location is, because the third part will not count if you unlock a stronghold. So you guys will need to find a key that is to a specific location. Doesn't matter if you get it from that HVT or anywhere else, obviously, you guys will get access to it. And then you guys are going to want to look up where it is because you're going to need to head to that location and unlock that door. So for me, I had the special ops one. I went over to the specific location where the key was used for. I unlocked that cache. And once I did so, the third part and this mission was complete. Next up, we have demolitions. This one is going to be two parts and can be completed on Almazra, Ashika, or Vondal. Part one is asking us to complete a destroy supplies contract to locate nearby safes. So once you guys infill into the map, you guys are going to open up your TAC map, and then you're going to be looking for the contract phone that has the bomb on it. Then we'll ping that, head over to it, grab it. We'll mark two bomb locations. You guys are then going to need to go over, eliminate the AIs, and then plant them. You'll do that at the first location, obviously. Go over to the second location, repeat that process. Once these are both planted, there will be a duration of time and before they explode. Once both of those actually explode, it will complete the contract and ping some nearby safe locations. But once you guys actually complete the contract, and obviously the safes are marked on the map, part one is then complete. Part two is just asking us to find and open a safe. So once you've completed the contract, Contract, you guys will be able to open up your TAC map and see some safes located on it. You guys are then going to want to ping one, whichever one is closest to you, head over to this location, eliminate the AI in the area, and then be able to initiate the drill on the safe. Once you guys do this, obviously a progress bar will pop up. You guys will defend it for the duration of that. At the end of it, it will unlock the safe, completing part two and this mission. Next up, we have night operation. This one is going to send us over to Almazra, and it is going to be three parts. Part one asks us to take the two IR beacons from the Al Shireen Pass dead drop. Once you guys infill into the map, obviously you guys are going to see where you are located, and you're going to want to ping all Shareem on the map. And you guys are going to want to head to this location. And the best way to work your way up to the dead drop is from the side that is closest to Octar Village. You guys can most of the time ignore most of the AI in the area. And it can be pretty frustrating in Al Shareem as it is more of a place where you're going to run across tier threes. So you're going to want to come across as little AI as possible. Basically, make your way up what I would call a mountain of Al Shareem on the side closest to Octar Village. If you follow the path the right way up that side, once you guys get towards the top, you guys will run across a ladder. And once you guys climb up to the top of this ladder, you guys will then see the dead drop location. As always, I will do my best to show you this location on the map. You guys will make your way over to this dead drop, open it up, and inside you will get access to the two IR beacons. Once you guys do, part one is then complete. Now part two is just asking us to plant one at the north tower in the Almazra city construction zone. Now you are high enough on Al Shareem where you could pretty much float your way down to this area if you wanted, or you guys could obviously jump in a vehicle and head over, but you're going to open up your map and it, towards the southeast portion of Almazra city, pretty close to where the downtown post office is actually, or nearby that is that construction zone. So you guys are going to then want to look for the two towers in that area you're going to want to head to the northern one. If you guys open up your map, they are represented by two circles, so it should be pretty easy to find them. But you're going to head over to that north one first. And in the bottom level here, there is an elevator shaft that you can zip line up to the top. Once you get to the top, you're going to drop down and make your way to the main platform up here. And that's actually where you will be placing this first IR beacon. Now you're going to want to be on the top of this, pretty much facing the tallest building in Almazra. And you guys should see in this area a queue to where you can place that first IR beacon down. You guys will obviously activate it, place that first one down, and the second part will be complete. Now part three is asking is to plant one at the south tower in Almazra city construction zone. Now to save you guys some time, once you guys get up to the southern one, you guys will be placing it in the exact same spot as you do in the north one. But basically just turn around, jump off, parachute over to the other side, make your way up to that top platform of the second tower. Then in the exact same spot or similar area of where you placed it in the north tower, you guys will see a queue to place it on the second tower. This will then go ahead and place the second IR beacon down. But once you do so, that will wrap up part two and this mission. Next up, we have medical mule. This one is going to be a two parter and it is taking us over to Almazra. Part one is asking us to deliver three revive pistols or self revives to the dumps 
Master Dead Drop and Zarqua Hydroelectric. Now, I definitely recommend for this, you could go and hit up hospitals. A lot of it's going to be determined on where you actually spawn in. But my best recommendation for finding revive pistols or self revives, at least especially close to the Zarqua Hydroelectric Dead Drop, would be to go to Zarqua Hydroelectric. Now, in this area, there are a ton of buildings that have first aid kits or medicine cabinets. As we'll be able to open them and loot them through each and every one of these buildings, giving you a pretty good chance to find either a revive pistol or a self revive. I'm going to be honest, I found like four or five of these by looking all around in Zarqua Hydroelectric. So I was able to drop them off pretty quickly and easy at that dead drop. Now before I dead dropped any of these, I actually went and did part two, which is asking us to deliver five AFAX or large medical bags to the same dead drop. Same thing, just go hit up these hospital locations that are all around the map as there are six hospitals, but I definitely recommend going over to Zarqua Hydroelectric because again, it is pretty likely by looting all of these buildings in this area, hitting up those first aid kits or medicine cabinets, you will not only get access to the part one stuff you need with the revive pistols or self revives, but the AFAX or large medicine bags as well well. So it is fairly likely by looting all around Zarqua Hydroelectric, you could acquire all of these items that you need and then dead drop all of them at the exact same time. Now the Zarqua Hydroelectric dead drop is going to be located behind the gas station or toward the southwest of Zarqua Hydroelectric, basically at the southern point of that western bridge. This will make your way over to this dead drop location after looting all around the Zarqua Hydroelectric area, getting access to all of these, dead dropping them all at once, knocking out part one and two, and this mission. Next up, we have our last and final mission, Eavesdrop. This one is going to be a three-parter, and it is taking us over to Ashika Island. Part one is asking us to take the discrete radio transmitter from the Ashika Town Center dead drop. So what you guys are going to do is infill into the map, obviously to see where you guys are located, open up your TAC map, and you're going to want to identify where the waterways entrance is in the Town Center area. To the left of this will be the Science Center, and to the left of that, between that and the gas station, will be where that dead drop location is going to be. It's going to head over to this Town Center dead drop, and of course, as always, I will do my best to show you guys this location on the map is we'll open up that dead drop and be able to take the discrete radio transmitter. Once you guys have access to this, part one is then complete. Now part two is just asking us to plant the radio at the top of the Shadow Company ship. So once you guys open up your TAC map, you're going to be looking for the ship that is over in Port Ashika, which have a giant Shadow Company flag at the top. You guys won't be able to miss this over in that area. As so we'll head over to it, at the southern point of it will be the more taller part of the ship. This is the section you need to make your way to. And there is a ladder pretty close over here. If you guys swim in the water, it should be able to climb the ladder and ignore some of the AI getting over here. Once you guys get to the top of the ladder, you're going to eliminate the AI and make your way up to the top of the ship. Now, originally, I thought I had to make my way all the way at the very top of the ship itself, but it's actually just the top room. So once you guys make your way up to the top room here, you guys will know you're in the right place because there will be all the windows kind of overlooking the rest of the ship. And somewhere in this area, you guys will see the queue to place this radio. Once you guys are able to see that queue, you guys will place this down and that will wrap up part two. Now, part three is just asking us to upload the radio's frequency to an upload station after it's planted. So now you guys have made your way up to the top of the ship, place this radio down. Now, all you're going to need to do is make your way over to Port Ashika to the radio tower over here. Now, it doesn't exclusively have to be this radio tower. However, this is definitely the closest one to you. So for some reason, if it seems really contested there, you guys can make your way to one of the other radio towers. But you're going to make your way over to this radio tower location. You're going to climb up. Once you get to the top, there will be that upload station there. You guys will activate the upload station just like you would with a secure Intel contract. A progress bar will show up. It will go through that progress bar. And once that upload is complete, that will have then upload the radio frequency, completing part three and this mission. And once you guys finish this last and final mission, you will unlock tier three of the White Lotus faction. Now that's going to wrap things up for today's mission guide. Thank you guys for all the support in today's video, all the support in the channel, and I look forward to seeing y'all in the next one. Peace.